The items I'm going to look at today have been sitting on my shelf for a little while. One of them's a Amiga 500 Rev 5, just a board with no chips, which I bought as not working. The board was supposed to be completely dead. I was expecting there to be some dry solder joints or something of that nature to fix. But unfortunately, it languished on a shelf for quite some time. Because of the description, I was expecting this to be quite a complicated issue. So in the back of my mind, I think I just avoided it because it was probably going to be a nightmare. And today's the day that I'm going to get round to looking at the board. And it really isn't what I expected. The second item I've had sitting on my shelf is a floppy drive, which is also sold as not working. Hopefully that'll be a relatively obvious problem. So the 500 board is without chipset. At the moment it's got an Agnes in it, but that is literally because I put it in there so that I wouldn't forget where it was. Weirdly, I forgot where it was because I put it in a board. Admittedly, slightly better than putting it in the bottom of the drawer in the kitchen. Note to self, I should check in the bottom of the drawer in the kitchen. So that's where I left our sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay can provide prototype PCBs for as little as $5. And they've been making PCBs for over 11 years now and have built up some side services like 3D printing, CNC machining and sheet metal fabrication. All this can be found at PCBWay.com. Thanks PCBWay for sponsoring this video. So I've definitely got a Denise. I've got one CIA, a 1.3 ROM, which is correct for this machine. I am, however, struggling to find a Gary, a Paula. In fact, two CIAs, because this one appears to have big X's on it, which is probably a sign that it might not be good. So my Ziff Amiga 500 Rev 5 to the rescue. I can rob the chips out of that board to see if this one has any signs of life. And we can turn it on. And it works absolutely perfectly. Is it possible to ask an eBay seller to refund you because they sold you something that was supposed to be broken? Is that a thing? Is it? Well, we can move on to the floppy drive, which is broken. Possible foreshadowing here. So I've already taken the outer shell off the floppy drive. This was on it. Um, so you can see it's a standard 500. These are the Chiron drives. They're quite reliable, to be honest. But it was sold to me as not working. Complete, it's supposed to be completely dead. So I can't see anything obviously wrong. I've given the heads a little tickle with some IPA and a cotton bud. I've made sure that everything moves as it should. A little bit of lubricant. So these are just standard maintenance drive things. We're not fixing anything, it's just maintenance. Connected it up and... Well, I can boot into Amiga Test Kit. So that doesn't prove that the drive works because Amiga Test Kit is so tiny, it basically fits on the boot block. So we need to run a full test on the drive. And for the most part, this drive is actually working. But you'll notice as we get towards the center of the disk or further in, we start to see errors appearing. And I know exactly what that is on these Chiron drives. So to read a floppy disk correctly, it needs adequate pressure on the top head. If that's not there, that can lead to read errors. 
It can also lead to scenarios where the pressure on the top head tails off as the head moves towards the center of the disc, which I think is exactly what we're seeing here. All I'm going to do is adjust the spring. Nothing complicated. On the Shuron drives, there's a little staircase and all I'm going to do is move it up one step. And that should solve the problem. And running through the same test shows the errors are gone. This drive is now working fine. In fact, we can give it a little bit more of a workout by loading Grind. Grind itself has its own loader. It directly accesses a floppy drive. It's quite nice that it gives you quite a verbose output while it's loading. And you're able to see whereabouts it's erroring. It's kind of like a game that is also a floppy drive test. So I did the obvious thing that any YouTuber would do. I went and bought another broken floppy drive from eBay. This time I was fairly sure this was going to be broken, particularly given what I paid for it. The first order of business, just take the case off, give it the usual service. So clean the heads, make sure everything rotates, and then we can connect it up to the Amiga and see what it does. Right, with this one, I'm going to show you what I paid for this drive. The total sum of £1.80 for an Amiga 500 500 Plus used Chiron floppy drive, non working parts only. I've tickled the heads, a bit of IPA, lubricated the motor, made sure it turns. I felt like there was a tiny bit of maybe stiction in the motor, but that, that's freed off, no problem. Made sure everything inserted correctly, tested it, and it works perfectly. You just, you just can't buy broken stuff anymore. Just a little note on the Rev5 with LEDs, which does occasionally catch people out when they're loading games. So you'll notice the light comes off we've got power got floppy activity this is loading grind one of the things grind does is it changes the low pass filter setting when you do that on rev 5 it will turn off the power light and you'll see this happen as soon as it finishes loading it's currently ticking away and there we go both lights have gone off the amiga's still on it's still running it's not crashed it's just a low pass filter. Just a little note. If you've liked this video, found it in any way informative or entertaining, then please click like. And if you want to see more videos like this, click on subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything, but it really makes a difference to my channel. But in the meantime, why don't you check this out next? <laughs>